Please welcome Eric Mall with a presentation on a fire compatible model for personal healthcare devices. Eric, take it away. Okay, and you want me to share my screen? Why is that now working differently? And that should do it. And why did it? Okay. Um, my name is Eric Moll. I am an architect at Philips, basically at Philips Research. And uh, as you see, I'm also a cyclist, as many Dutch uh, people are. And what I'm trying to explain to you is um, a new IEEE standard, 11073-10206, um, an abstract content model for personal health devices. And that model is fire compatible and uh, we'll explain the background of that work and why it matters for fire developers, um, which I think many of you are. And um, yeah, if there are questions, uh, feel free to ask them either in the chat or even uh, during this presentation. So what is ACOM? Well, ACOM is a solution for the problem that we still have today that there is no good generic and interoperable standard for personal health, health sensor communication. And ACOM is a new IEEE specification that is still under development that aims to solve that problem by um, taking the best ideas um, from many places. It takes the IEEE 11073 domain information model um, that has been around in point of care and personal health for yeah, 15 years and that is um, uh, appropriate for this domain. And it also takes the IEEE 11073 nomenclature, nomenclature code system or 11073-10101. And I'm sorry for all these numbers, but that's the way that um, specifications in IEEE are named. Um, so we define this uh, model and its objects and attributes can easily be presented also as fire resources. They are quite close to each other. And uh, this model can also be carried by virtue of the codes in a binary presentation over other protocols like Bluetooth LE and other um, constraint protocols that we um, see coming like uh, narrowband uh, IoT and, um, and similar. And within various working groups of IEEE, IHC and the Bluetooth SIG, we are working on uh, all these pieces to make something um, that solves the problem. So zooming into the problem a little bit more, um, what you see on the left are typical personal health devices. And uh, today they uh, mainly communicate over Bluetooth and they mainly use proprietary protocols to do that. And they communicate to apps or um, other gateways from which you then can upload your sensor data to a fire server or other healthcare IT system. And um, yeah, there's issues with that. Um, when you look at the Bluetooth 6 current set of CAD profiles for such devices, um, they differ per device type. So when you have um, yeah, solved the communication problem for the scale, you need to restart when you do that for a blood pressure monitor or a pulse oximeter. That is not handy. Um, there was an alternative, that's the, um, classic um, IEEE 11073-20601 standard for those familiar in the domain. That's the um, optimized exchange protocol for such devices. But that failed to find market traction basically because of lack of support in common platforms and because of its complexity. And as a result, we see vendors, um, well, either defining their own protocols or taking a GAT profile from the SIG and um, adding features um, to it, making it not interoperable. And the consequence of that is that the gateways that need to deal with such devices 
uh, must cope with a lot of diversity and that makes them expensive to develop, expensive to maintain and expensive to deploy. And uh, yeah, a lot of waste is there. And we now see that the same might be happening for uh, direct to cloud sensor devices that upload their data directly to um, healthcare IT systems, to fire servers or similar. So for this um, context, we do need something that is universally applicable, easy to implement and compatible with what's um, desired on the right side in the healthcare IT systems. systems. Something like fire, but suitable for um, yeah, binary constraint protocols. And that's why we started uh, the, the ACOM related work. Um, let's zoom into the model, which is indeed uh, simple. Uh, what you see here is the, the whole context diagram. Um, we have a personal health device as an object, and that is uh, the object uh, and that generates the observations and the observations, we'll zoom into that a bit later. But the personal health device itself contains the system information object, a power object that models the source of the device and a clock. And yeah, clock and time are important. Um, for all healthcare um, related activities in this uh, domain. So we model that as well here. Um, zooming into the observations, um, there's one base class. And um, from that base class, we derived uh, the main categories of devices that personal health devices uh, generate. There are numeric observations in single and compound form. There's a sample array that can be used for, yeah, a sample array, a waveform. There are discrete observations that report events or, um, yeah, state values. And um, if that's not enough, you can also uh, use a string observation, but then the string itself um, is reported and, yeah, uh, that's something readable by humans, but that might not be the most interoperable solution. So we try to avoid that in uh, the IEEE personal health domain context. Zooming further into this um, observation um, class, uh, as said, it's the generic base class for all observations. It has a number of uh, mandatory attributes. It has a type, um, the type that defines the kind of measurement uh, and that is being reported, uh, the timestamp and a number of optional attributes such as the observation status, the duration, um, supplemental information, giving more detail on um, the observation itself. There can be a person ID and uh, references to other observations. And um, yeah, the nice thing about this model is that also the attributes um, come with an MDC code from the IEEE 10101 um, nomenclature set. And uh, that enables a compact binary presentation of both the attributes and their values. And here I um, filled in one example for a pulse oximeter SpO2 observation. Um, you see some of the nomenclature codes from 10101 in the table. The type um, is MDC pulse oxim set 02. Um, that's the human readable reference ID, but it is a four byte um, value uh, that can be looked up in the, in the nomenclature set. The same holds for the um, unit code, but there we, yeah, since it's a unit code, we know it comes from a fixed partition. Uh, we can stick that in two bytes. And then the observed value that will be a, a float and the timestamp that will take eight bytes. And um, we have still some discussion on how that will be modeled in, for example, Bluetooth. 
and there can be supplemental information in the case of SpO2. Um, you can indicate that it's a spot check. That results in, if you do it in, a, in an efficient manner, in an observation of um, a size of around 27 bytes. And that is quite feasible in today's uh, yeah, Bluetooth uh, um, channels. Um, as said, we looked at fire and yeah, fire has the generic uh, resources. So the ACOM observation object will of course map to a fire um, observation resource and the type of the observation, the pulse oximeter MBC code will be mapped to a code with a coding indicating the IEEE spec and the numeric value of the code. The unit code um, similarly will go to the value quantity, um, where is it? The code and the observed value itself will of course go to the value of the value, value quantity. Timestamp will be mapped to effective date time so that it is pretty um, straightforward. And this kind of mapping from IEEE um, 11073 domain to FIRE is already described in the 807 FIRE PhD implementation guide and also in the IEC uh, PhD observation upload uh, profile, POU. So that, that are pieces that are already in place. Um, zooming in a little bit into the uh, personal health device class itself. I said it uh, contains system information, power and clock. It's the thing that generates observations in our model um, and it carries things um, within the system information uh, object as the device identification attributes, something like a serial number or uh, the UDI, although that is not yet heavily used in the digital communication of such devices, or the EUI64, uh, which uh, also comes from IEEE that maintains uh, um, those values in its registry. Um, the system information also tells, uh, can tell you what types of observations uh, the PhD can generate. And um, it can also tell you that it supports a specific device specialization, such as a weight scale or a blood pressure monitor. And the device specializations, I'll uh, zoom into that um, a little bit more, but this, um, PhD object can be mapped to a fire device resource. Um, as, as mentioned, uh, zooming into device specializations, a device specialization defines a set of coherent uh, observation subclasses that the personal health device uh, uh, may support or has to support. And uh, sticking to the example of the pulse oximeter, uh, a pulse oximeter has to be able to generate um, oxygen saturation observations and pulse rate observations. And in addition to that, it may, that's an option, generate pulsatile quality and plat waveform uh, observations and also uh, sensor status observations. Um, so that, that's an example of a, a device specialization. And um, we inherit a rich set of, yeah, I think around 80 something device specializations from the, the yeah, this complex specification that I mentioned from the IEEE 20601 uh, um, specialization family. All of them um, can be fit into this model, but we, drop all the complex protocol stuff. We just take the model from, from these specializations. So um, yeah, why does this matter? 
once we have this ACON model for observations coming from personal health devices, uh, you are a, uh, you can build a generic gateway and um, um, you can, um, that, that allows any type of sensor to connect to that gateway without any new coding. And even new sensor types can be added uh, as long as they follow this model. And then the gateway will be able to support them. And um, um, I think that will enable uh, less um, yeah, waste in getting information or getting observations from sensor devices into fire services and other health IT systems. Um, we, we think it, yeah, the model might even be suitable beyond just the personal health domain, but that, that, that that's the domain where we are um, coming from. Um, where we are with all of this, um, the IEEE standard uh, is called uh, 10206. Uh, a first complete draft is ready and the initial ballot has uh, just finished and we need to do a uh, comment resolution. Um, yeah, we aim for an approved version Q2, Q3. It might become Q4, we'll see. So that's one piece of work. And in the Bluetooth SIG, um, we are working on uh, a generic health sensor profile and service that take this ACOM model and uh, uh, carry it over a CAT um, um, communication channel. Um, here, the schedule is to be complete with that, at least with a prototyping spec towards the end of 2021, adoption early 2022. And then third, um, as mentioned before in IHC, in the IHC PCHA, personal connected health domain, uh, we are working on an IHC direct to cloud profile for constrained cellular devices that will also be based on ACOM. And um, I have included some links to these uh, standard working groups for um, yeah, further information if, if you're interested. And um, yeah, in, in the Bluetooth SIG, um, we found a quite nice set of companies that are supporting this work. And um, we will reuse some of the proven mechanisms like the record access control point and um, yeah, the, the message flow for of typical GAT uh, services using indications and notifications, etc. And uh, right now we are figuring out how best to deal with timestamps and clocks um, since there are already some solutions in the Bluetooth uh, SIG uh, um, set of CAT specifications, but they don't do the job that well. And for more information, uh, you can join the Bluetooth SIG medical devices working group, but I can't share too much details uh, because of the um, yeah, IP policy of the Bluetooth SIG. In the direct to cloud um, um, work group in IHC, uh, we have uh, Vodafone, Medisanta, Roche, and Philips uh, participating actively. And we're figuring out what the best protocol stack would be to carry um, this ACOM model. And their co app is uh, being a main candidate. And yeah, the payload. Um, we, we have serious discussions and flipping from JSON or full-fledged fire to binary, but that is still to be decided. This work is um, yeah, less uh, um, advanced, less developed than the other two parts. And um, yeah, that brings me to a slide that introduces the demo. But I should also introduce uh, Abdul. Uh, Abdul is a colleague of mine. We're working together on this, and um, yeah, we basically demonstrated we can demonstrate this whole um, 
approach and um, we are also inviting other companies to do that since once the specs are um, advanced well enough we will be doing interoperability testing under uh, the Bluetooth 6 uh, development process and there um, the more is better. Um, are there questions right now and uh, if not then I'll, I'd like to hand over to Abdul to introduce the demo and show what we built. Okay, up to. I'll uh, take a if, if there are any questions, of course, yeah, either uh, after the demo or during the demo, feel free to ask, and I will share. My desktop. This is. Uh, is my screen being shared yet? Let's see it. Not yet. Let's try this again. Yes. Okay, I think it's in. There we go. Very good. Uh, thanks, Eric. Uh, as Eric mentioned, I'm uh, Abdul Nabi, uh, and I'm a software concepts developer for connected devices and mobile apps here in Amsterdam. Uh, so, what uh, I'd like to show uh, is a basic demo of three components uh, that we use to test um, ACOM, generic health service, uh, gateways, and fire. Uh, and what you see uh, is on the, the far left, uh, basically uh, an open source app that we have that's a basic simulator for a uh, generic health uh, sensor server. So basically you can set device info, the type of observations you'd like to send, uh, continuous emitting or just a uh, one-shot uh, emitter, and uh, some experimental features so that you can play around. Uh, again, this is open source in the Philips Labs GitHub. Um, and basically based on what Eric has shown on the architecture slides, assembles up uh, the ACOM objects based on what you've selected, uh, and then uh, BLE has a segmentation scheme because obviously in the cases of things like sample arrays or um, some, some of the richer combination observations, you need to break those up into segments to fit over the, the wire on, over, uh, over BLE. So that gets sent. And then that goes to another app here, which is basically the, the client side, the BLE client. Um, a version of this will be open source uh, in a few weeks. Uh, and will be referenced via, if you go to the GitLab, Philips Lab GitLab for uh, the GHS simulator, you'll see a pointer uh, when it's released to this uh, client side that basically receives all the, the segments coming over BLE, reassemble those, reassembles those into the ACOM objects, uh, and then creates uh, basically some model objects from those. Right now, uh, what we're doing is we're taking those and basically, as Eric had mentioned, it's a fairly good, it's a fairly quick translation from that to fire. So basically there's a very thin layer that translates the ACOM into fire, uh, and then basically using uh, OK HTTP uh, sends to the, as you see on the far right, I would imagine a lot of you are from already familiar with this page. Uh, in this case, I'm just running a, a happy fire server on my local host. I was looking at uh, sending it to the public, uh, happy.fire.org, but it was being somewhat irresponsive uh, about 30 minutes ago. So I just said, okay, I'll send it to the one I'm running in a, a Docker image here. So um, basically what we can do, and if we start uh, 
looking for devices, we see that uh, the, the client app is seeing the simulator that's on the left. So uh, let's connect to that. And we are now connected. By the way, these are just running on my desk and I'm uh, uh, grabbing the screen by a screen copy, which is an Android utility. Um, and then let's do something simple such as, uh, let's just have this be a, a thermometer and a, a temperature and sending a, an ACOM temperature. We'll just uh, emit that. Interesting. That must be the demo effect. It's the demo effect. I can just easily uh, There we go. Uh, this thing's a good kick. And then uh, if I refresh here, you will see uh, there's an observation that's come posted into the server. Um, and there's a body temperature. And as you can see, the ACOM basically they said that, uh, and as Eric had showed, it translates very, it's a very thin layer to tran uh, translate. Uh, an ACOM object into fire and then basically just shoot that up. And then in the case, we can actually get a little more complicated. Let's do a PPG in array and an SPO2. Um, set this to two and we'll send those. You'll see basically I generate a, a random waveform uh, and uh, then the SPO2. And of course, if we come here, As this refreshes, you'll see there's two more observations in there. There's the PPG array, you can see the values, uh, and again, the various uh, other fields, and also the SPO2. Again, this is fairly basic. We could actually create a bundle out of these. There's a number of other things. Um, right now, this app does not uh, do anything with, in terms of connectivity to patients. Uh, and some some other details that we could add for for fire. But again, uh, the client app in the middle will be there'll be a version of this open sourced in the next few weeks, um, and you'll be able to grab and and run all this code and modify it for uh, whatever purpose or testing uh, one would like. So yeah, thank you, Abdul. Um, are there any specific questions for Abdul? Otherwise, I'll grab back the screen and show a few other slides to round this off. Okay. Um, yeah, not only um, we worked on a demo, also Ellen and I, worked on a demo that even includes uh, some embedded uh, code and a similar gateway um, that, that the code project is um, um, an initiative to have code available for yeah, the PCHA IHE um, guidelines for personal health in general. And that includes uh, code for this gateway supporting uh, ACOM over Bluetooth, um, an early version of DHS. And once the generic health service specifications in the Bluetooth SIG um, are stable enough, uh, we will be doing interoperability testing um, between um, this code um, gateway and the Philips gateway uh, and the Philips sensor simulator and vice versa. Um, PCHA also plans to move the, the code to open source in the future. And um, yeah, that brings me to the slide that summarizes all of this. So I introduced uh, the abstract content model for personal health devices or ACOM as we call it, as a generic model for 
personal health devices and the observations that such devices typically generate. And all the objects in the model can easily be mapped to fire resources. And we think that uh, having a Bluetooth CAT service supporting this um, will uh, make it easier to get sensor devices getting uh, uh, posting their data into fire service in the end. Um, the same should happen for direct to cloud sensor devices. And all of this will enable build once gateways to get such observations to um, the fire domain. And as you have seen, early demonstrators and source code is already available. And um, yeah, we hope that this will find uh, wide, uh, broad market adoption by many device makers out there. Um, sorry. Here you can see um, some of the contact details. Uh, I'm here, Barry and Brian Reinhold. Um, um, are working on, on this as well on the IEEE spec site and the code demo. Tom Ericsson, who you didn't see, um, is a sponsor of this via HIMSS PCHA. And uh, my colleague Abdul uh, did our demo. And that's it. And questions are welcome. And everyone can unmute to ask your questions, or you may post them in the chat Q&A box in Whova, whichever you are most comfortable with. I'm not seeing any questions posted in Whova currently. And uh, does anyone want to unmute and ask a question or should we ask Eric to make a closing comment? Seems it, like, oh, go ahead. Either, either it was uh, perfectly clear or yeah. it was perfectly unclear so that people don't know what to ask. Yes, <laughs> I vote for perfectly clear. And um, if there are questions, Eric can be found in Whova. You can message him directly um, and you can follow up with any questions. Oh, you know, I do see a question here um, that is in Whova. It says, have you discussed including terminology services such as value sets, concept maps, et cetera? into the gateway layer, or do you see that as something for the fire server to handle? That's a good question. Um, we have been looking into that for our own implementation. And uh, indeed, uh, sometimes you need more than the IEEE um, 11073 nomenclature. Um, you might want to map to LOINC or um, others, but the communication from the sensor device to the gateway will be using uh, the IEEE code set. And um, um, the gateway can to a large extent be agnostic for the exact codes used as long as it knows the object model that I presented. Uh, you can stick in any code for any type of observ observation and even any type of attribute of an observation. So we want to avoid making the gateways too complex. However, if you want to do some mapping from IEEE code to other code systems, um, 
you might want to include dictionaries, value sets, value, um, value maps, etc., in the gateway. Um, that's a bit outside of the scope of ACOM itself. The FIRE implementation guide for PhD discusses that, I should add. And there is LOINC, uh, MDC to LOINC mapping that has been taking place. There was a start of uh, MDC to SNOMED years ago, which is never really fully developed. But it is discussed in the uh, PhD IG implementation yeah. guide. Yeah, and, and it is something that the gateway can pick up, but um, FIRE does support uh, 11073 as a code system, so you don't have to do that. And then it's up to the FIRE server if it wants to map uh, the IEEE codes to something else. Okay, very good. Thank you for that question and great response. I am not seeing other questions populate the Q&A box here. Um, so Eric, do you want to wait a little longer or would you like to just make a, a closing comment or a wrap up? Um. I, I I don't have anything to add. What we okay. could do is uh, show another demo that's pre-recorded on video. People are interested in that. Sure, that, that's great. And, and uh, sure, so if anyone wants to stay on, um, Eric will share another demo. Okay. I could try it live. Whatever you prefer, Brian. Um, the uh, voice recording was so lousy um, because I guess it doesn't like my headphone mic or whatever. Uh, there was nothing I could do to get a better yeah. quality recording. Might as well just try it live. Yeah, we only have seven minutes. So. Okay, well, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think the, the main difference was that I concentrated the GHS protocol on the, the embedded side, um, uh, working with embedded platforms and not being an experienced embedded systems developer. It was a real learning experience for me. And um, that also uh, forced me into trying to design situations which were as easy as possible to program because I'm too stupid to know how to program embedded systems. So the simpler they are, the better. For, for blockheads like me. But that's the main difference. Uh, otherwise, the gateway is the same type of philosophy that follows the uh, PhD I, IG to map the intermediary objects, which is basically what ACOM was originally based upon, um, and spit that out as fire. These are also used in the PCHA code, which is going to be eventually freely downloadable, right? Well, yeah, but uh, we didn't wait for that, uh, Brian. Yeah. We, th we think we can, and, and since we do need in independent implementations for the Bluetooth SIG anyway. Yeah, uh, they, they we... don't exist yet. Yeah. The, yeah. And um, that's the other thing I'll have to say. Implementation of the GHS on the Android was easy. I mean, I spent almost no time at all doing that. I spent all my time trying to develop systems on embedded platforms. That was not so easy. <laughs> so, so let's hope that um, the, the ACO model is uh, simple enough and um, yeah, generic enough and um, offers e enough um, options for uh, sensor makers to really pick it up and find out that it can, can be a simple thing. Yeah, you certainly can. Uh, I mean, even with a design that I have, you can make any sensor that you want. The question is, is it is simple enough? That's yeah. that's the bottom line. Will yeah. uh, developers get scared away by it? Because is it too complicated? That's hard to judge. 
uh, it would be nice if we could have a code for the sensor side and not just the gateway side. Though developing code for the sensor side is of course an extreme challenge. Every sensor, embedded sensor is going to be different. And there's no way you can get away from it. All the Bluetooth APIs are gonna be different. You're stuck with that. There, there, there is quite some common ground there as well, but that's a different story. Yeah, uh, the APIs will be different. But the philosophy is the same, but the APIs are different on every chip. Yeah. Okay. Um, thanks for that uh, uh, last pieces of input, uh, uh, Brian. And I, th I think we can wrap up uh, here. Thanks all for your attention. I, I hope you um, learned something new, not fully oriented on fire, but on how to get data into fire servers from sensor devices. And um, um, yeah, feel free to contact uh, uh, myself, uh, Brian, Tom or Abdul on, if you have any questions uh, later on. Excellent. And thank you, Eric and, and team for your excellent presentation.